Today, I've got pretty much what is the fanfiction of Genesis. Hello, fellow podcasters. Today, I got this book called Paradise Lost by John Milton. It's basically pretty much a poem. It's a giant poem. And the main character is Satan, and it's basically an adaptation of Genesis and, and Satan's perspective. It's basically the explanation for it. I haven't read the entire thing. I've read the first four chapters, and I'm just going to talk about the first four chapters and the stuff in it. Let's go... So, let's start. So, yeah, as I mentioned, Je- this is pretty much a fanfiction of the Bible that John Milton kind of wrote for almost no reason. And I, I I found it really funny, honestly, because I've read the Bible once or two times, and especially Genesis. Like, everyone's read Genesis a couple of times, right? It's very easy to read, even if you're not Catholic or Christian. Like, I was a Catholic, and obviously I've read Genesis, and several times it's very important adam and eve and all that and even if you are like an atheist or not not christian or catholic you've heard of adam and eve and something about an apple and that that's genesis and it's it's the origin story in the bible and that is and this adapts basically what what's going on in genesis so basically satan's pretty much the main character in in the book and pretty much the the entire book starts with Satan kind of waking up in hell, and he's been like cast down with alongside his army, like a third of heaven, alongside his army of like fallen angels and people that used to be angels, and now we're all under there and we're in hell. And Satan goes, "Hey, hey, hey! We should we should stand back up and we should make our own kingdom." And they make hell their kingdom. However, all the demons are super, super greedy. All the devils and demons and the princes of hell are super greedy. And they want to go back up to heaven and to dethrone God. Meanwhile, God kind of knows everything. So they don't know if that's possible or not. But they think maybe the next best thing is to corrupt uh, humanity. At, or God's current favorite creations. And humanity is currently two people or persons, whatever. Uh, it's Adam and Eve. And it's the first woman and the first man. And, and it's, it's very, it's pretty much Satan just going up there and trying to corrupt those two. And something that's really interesting is how Satan is the main character and how he's portrayed. He's very relatable. It's like an injustice, an injustice has been done to him. He was ambitious, but he was cast down because of his ambition and pride. And he's not one of the archangels, and he's kind of just powerful enough to feel ambition, but not, not, not powerful enough to be an archangel and be as powerful as God. Well, no one is powerful as God anyway. And he's like at, at the middle, and, and that kind of gives like a middle, for me, that kind of gives like middle middle kid vibes, you know? Like the middle child is always not really given a lot of attention. That That's the kind of vibe that I get from Satan. Because he, he while he does not like God and he hates his authority and he's rebelling against them, at the same time, he, he, he's a little bit hungry for God's love. It's like a middle child that hasn't been given enough attention by his or her parents. And that's the kind of vibe that I got, and which is kind of relatable for a lot of people. And even for me, who's an only child, a very blessed person, I can kind of relate to that feeling of injustice. And, and pretty much the, what I read so far is Satan convinces all of the princes of hell that he is a sacrifice and he's going up. And facing danger and finding finding our friend, our friend Adam and Eve, and kind of talking to them and trying to corrupt them. Yeah. So basically, literally the entire plot so far was that he's kind of like the counterpart of Jesus, because Jesus is sacrificing himself for humanity, while Satan, in some regard, is sacrificing himself for the princes of hell. And he's he's he went, he goes up there. And he, he tr- sneaks into Eden's garden and tries to corrupt Adam and Eve. However, well, he gets caught by one of the archangels, well, two of the archangels. And he gets driven back. And he was about to, like, fight them when there's a literal sign in the air that says, You will not win, Satan, from God. And then the angel, like, says, like, hey, um, you can't beat us because all of our power levels depend on God. And I'm just like... How in the world did Satan and the angels start a rebellion if God can control your power levels? Like, d- doesn't angels at least have some sort of in- independent power source or, or something? Because if God controls everything, like, including the angels, and I don't know how Satan, like, made a rebellion, but whatever, th- those are technicalities. And and basically, the entire thing is like an explanation, almost, and 
an, a tie-up of what the Adam and Eve story is, which is basically just a corruption story, and Satan's kind of almost the victim, portrayed almost as the victim. And yeah, it's kind of pretty much the weird thing. And a couple really funny parts, funny or disgusting parts is number one, Satan versus Sin and has a kid with Sin called Death. So basically, he has a kid with his daughter. And then the kid, like as in Satan's kid, who is named Death, this is before the concept of Death ex existed, by the way. Death goes ahead and has kids with Sin. So let me get this straight. Satan's family tree is currently he has a daughter named Sin, who is also his wife, and then he has a son, who is also has kids with his wife? I don't know, I just thought it was really disgusting, and also kind of funny and weird, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the usual myth stuff, you know, you know Zeus goes around and, and you know, you know be, be a really bad person and has kids with a lot of different women, I, and that's kind of weird stuff that happens in, in myths human adapted myth like this one is and then he, and then also all the other demons are other gods like for example he, he says uh the book describes that osiris isis is like the egyptian gods are all old all, all princes of hell and one of the demons and vulcan who is a roman god or or a greek in the greek we would call him hepatus he he's the god of forging and uh blacksmithing and he's described as one of the demon architects which is which I thought was really funny because that's like combining everything and kind of doing a neat little explanation of all the other myth aside from Catholicism or Christianity. And yeah, to 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 give a to give a just a quick like general like generalize a generalized like summary slash like roundup of what's happened so far. Satan wakes up in hell. He makes a kingdom in hell. He sacrifices himself for hell to get back at God by corrupting humanity. So he sneaks into the Garden of Eden, completely failed, and runs away. That is the end until book four. And honestly, there's not much to talk about there. But like I said, it's interesting how they portray, how John Milton portrayed Satan almost as, as the victim uh, of, a, of a rebellion, of, a, of an unjust system. And it's quite interesting because in the Bible, of course not, we don't get to see the story play out in Satan's eyes. And although we can tell that, yeah, Satan is evil, we don't get that full, like, oh, Satan is sin, whatever. And also what was really interesting is that, is that it's like the demons and Satan and the princes of hell, they aren't necessarily evil, and they don't have anything against humanity, they just want to get to back at God through humanity, because they can't hurt God anymore. Which I thought was an interesting concept, and I think it's kind of, kind of this nuanced within the Bible. If I'm correct, I'm, I'm not completely sure, and that I, I like how John Milton did that. Uh, the overall rating for this book will be like a 6 out of 10. It's, it's kind of funny because it has a lot of unexpected and weird stuff, but it's not, and, and it has some symbolism like and relatability like, and interesting things, factors like Satan being the main character, Satan's perspective, and how the, the, how the princes of hell aren't necessarily evil, and all, and that kind of stuff. However, however, overall, it's like, it's a very meh thing. It's, it's like, it's, if it's the Bible, it's like, the Bible isn't like a great book, but it's, it's more interesting to read than this, but at least, because at least it's an original, right? But this feels like a kind of like a, a weird combination of a lot of different myths and a lot of different stories that was adapted in, almost into the, the, the fit, the box of Genesis, or, or kind of fill in the blanks of Genesis with other myths. That was the vibe I kind of got from John Milton. Of course, it is very interesting to read fanfiction, like I've already mentioned throughout this review, but in general, I, I'm not sure. It's a very mad book. I'm, go I'm going with a 6 out of 10. Well, so far, anyway. You could prove me wrong later on. Anyways, like always, your plot question, your plot question, that's pretty much it. And I'll probably maybe come back with another review of this book after I read the rest of it. Have a great day.